shoot nobody. The first thing you do is shoot somebody. Cause that's what I do. I kill anything. I said, let's go. You see my cousin Charlie around? Who? Nah, I ain't saying. My mom took care of us herself. Things got a little tight. She told me I should go and try and find a job. So I went looking. Let's yeah. talk about Chi Division. Let's talk about all your great projects. Yeah. Let's talk about your Lionsgate deal. Yeah, this is exciting for me. This is actually the third time I've attended Sundance. And uh, th the first time in 2009, we came to uh, make everyone aware of me creating Chi Division as a film production company. And since then, I raised $200 million for the company to produce films and I did a 10 picture deal with Lionsgate. So for me, I, I feel like I've progressed at a pretty good. I'm at a pretty good pace right now. I just got to keep it up. And uh, I came out today to announce that I'll be doing a film project tomorrow today. It's actually a, a action film that I wrote. I'll be directing it. It'll be the first that I actually direct. And I brought in Floyd Mayweather. He, he would constantly be calling me while I'm on set. And I told him that I'm busy. I got to work. He didn't understand it, so I explained it to him further by allowing him to invest <laughs> in the actual project. You know, when people have a vested interest in things, they, they pay a lot more attention. So he uh, is coming in as a, a part of the financing and producing the actual project. That's great. So what can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, I mean, I don't want to disclose the actual story. And there'll be some changes that happened to it before, I, uh, before August. Okay. Cause we're shooting in August, and um, away from that, I just wrapped the setup. It's myself, Bruce Willis, and Ryan Phillippe, and I had an amazing experience with them. We shot a lot of the projects in Grand Rapids because of the tax incentives there. Right, which are so many right now. Right, and uh, just I don't see limits to the things that I can actually accomplish, especially having people who made the transition from music into film. Can you talk about that for a second? Because I'm really curious about that. Your transition from music into film and when it was that you said, I want to go get into movies. Well, I've always had interest in film. I've always enjoyed watching them. And there was points that I'd see things that were so visually stimulating that I wished that I could actually be in it. But, you know, music was consuming my time to the point that it wasn't possible. And recently I've been able to make some adjustments for me to be a part of these film projects. So it's, I feel good, I'm actually happy, you know. I'm, I work a lot, people might consider me a, a workaholic, but I whistle while I work, you know. So I'm enjoying myself, this is what I, I like actually doing. I'm really excited at the opportunity of developing the ability to be a part of business deals on a different level. And what is it that you're looking for in projects? What kind of movies do you want to make? The people ask that, and they ask if there's a specific genre of film that I have interest in, and it's different. Because I've seen so many different great projects that I'd like to challenge myself as an actor and be a part of different pieces that are uh, rememberable. You know, I've had the opportunity to work with Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, and in, within that experience I saw the difference in working with seasoned, experienced talent versus some of the projects that I work with, new actors, mm -hmm. where they completely stuck to the line on the script versus the improvisation that you would get from an experienced actor. You know, so I, I different film genres, like Things Fall Apart, the project I committed to, I, I end up having to lose uh, 54 pounds mm -hmm. for the actual character in the film. And um, it's harder because it was a smaller time period, you know, like Tom Hanks, They'll give him four months, but he's Tom Hanks. <laughs> like you can break the actual production and come back four months later for his role in some of his films. And De Niro, Raging Bull, yeah. Christian Bale and the Machinist. And I had to do it in nine weeks because there's no money right. to wow. take four months. You know, you gotta get it done. So it's an interesting project though. It'll be out shortly. So it's myself, Mario Van Peoples, Lynn Whitfield, Ray Liotta. And I just can't wait for everyone to see it. You know, I'm excited. What was the most rewarding part for you? Finish. <laughs> when they say, the mar this is the martini. <laughs> the it's martini the most rewarding. Shot. You mean to tell me I can have a bite to eat? <laughs> you know, it's exciting to do that. I mean, but I'm rewarded constantly. My son looks at me like I'm a superhero. And that, you know, is probably the biggest reward, reward I've received so far. Yeah.
That is a that's he must be so proud of his yeah. dad. And now, I mean, I gotta do different things. The film projects are take me away, but not as there'll be gaps in between that I get a chance to spend more time with. My son is is getting older. He's fourteen years old. The last thing he wanna yeah. do is if you asked me to make a wish in 2003, I would wish that everyone would recognize the actual art, my talent. And Get Rich or Die Trying came out, and it's the largest debut in hip-hop album. So I can't ask for more in that actual area, but if you allow the success of your career to consume you to the point that you uh, don't see other things going on around you, you might come home and your child may be completely grown. Right, right. It's yeah. a danger. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it with him. He, he made the choices to not tour as often, to be with Haley more. So tell us about, um, I want to hear more about your writing. So you have this movie that you're writing now right. that you'll be directing. Can you talk to us a little bit? Well, it's the second, it's the third film, actually. I wrote uh, Before I Self-Destruct first, and then I actually directed it, but it doesn't count as my directorial debut because there was no budget. And to me, I don't you count it. But I actually distributed within the packaging of my last album because I wanted my fans to actually hear it because it was inspired by the album that I created. Mm -hmm. And I just added it to the packaging as additional value for that actual project. And the, the writing process is, is completely different from music. Music, the first time, your idea has to be the right idea or you'll have a song playing and it, it'll just be you second-guessing yourself. Hmm. And uh, in film, you can write a movie a hundred times. You can write it and reevaluate what your thoughts were, or what, how characters are responding, and rewrite it and do it again, and until you feel like it's perfected or it's perfect. And uh, on with tomorrow today, I've actually worked with other writers to clean it up, following what I've done. You know, guys that have bigger projects that I respect that they've worked on as writers. So it's exciting to see them when we're going through the process of sorting out the actual ideas and them being impressed by what I've already written. So when you think a little bit about, you know, your this is your gearing up for your directorial debut and the preparation process that you go through, are there certain directors you really admire and whose work you just love and Well, Joe Schumacher is one of my favorites. Yeah. But I, I've worked with uh Erwin Winkler. I work with Jim Sheridan. I love Jim Sheridan. Yeah, and it was really, really good directors. Jim is tough. I think it was because he didn't want me to show up and not be uh, completely into the actual project. You know, so he started off telling me people didn't want the film to be good, and that if you, you know, if you don't want to do it, let's not go. Period. He was trying to test you. Yeah, and how I do you deal with that? What do you say to him? You let him actually be in control at that point. I mean, it's his job for, at the end of the day, to get the right performance out of me in the actual film, and it's the first project. So you don't walk into a situation as green as I was at that point, feeling like you know it all. You know, I, I'm never really vulnerable in situations where I don't know. I wrote a business book with Robert Greene called The 50th Law of Power, and I had to go to colleges to discuss the actual book and some of the things that we wrote in it. And at that point, I was sitting in front of a room full of people who technically achieved a higher education, not technically, literally, achieved a higher education than I have, because I don't have a college degree in any way, and they went past the high school diploma mark. And at that point, to for me to feel secure, I had to hold on to the fact that I probably made $100 million than everybody in the room. So if they're business majors in any way, a lot of the business majors, I feel like, develop a great short-term memory and retain information long enough to pass midterms, but don't actually apply it to the work phase. Right, and if you have a business that's been that successful, you have a lot to talk about right. and share. Yeah. How do you do it all? I mean, you are doing so much right now. You're writing, gearing up to direct, you're producing, you're a well, the, dad, I mean. The writing project, the, the things, tomorrow today was, I've been writing that for a year in my free time. <laughs> and then, time. you know, like. You don't a, have any free time. And travel. 
When I'm commuting from one spot to the next, I have a lot of time. It feels like a lot when you get when you're focused on it. And I've done it with like four drafts of it before I started working with other writers to make it right. And I feel good about it. I think people, when they get a chance to see some of the things I've done, I've actually written The Gun with me, Val Kilmer, and Lynn McCoy, oh. and Danny Trejo on the actual project. And it was really quiet that I actually wrote that project, but I'm proud of it. I'm excited about it. I, I think once you know, once you've read an, enough of them, it starts to get easier for you to see what your actual idea is. And there's no time restraints. You know, so if it takes five, a year or two years for you to do it, I, I still think everyone who has an interest in it should try it. Yeah. You know. So what motivates you? Well, I, I'm just going in different areas, my interest creatively, in different areas that I'm excited about. Away from that, um, finances just create a, a freedom yeah. for me to be a part of different things and actually be an artist. You know, my real interest in it, because I, I felt like I needed things that I'm sure I don't need now. I went through a process. I think we all kind of condition to want more than we actually need. We get the home that costs 400000 and start looking at the one that costs six up the block. Yeah. It gives you something else to look forward to or to work for. Without motivation to say that this is the next level or this is what I'd like to achieve or what I want. Or it could be something small. It could just be an outfit or a particular pair of shoes. You know, when we look good, we feel good, so people have an interest in that. So I think tons of people would want advice from you. You've been so successful, and really, you're doing incredible things. And what would you say to someone who wanted to be a musician, who wanted to be a filmmaker or an actor? Well, I say don't be afraid. You know, go out there and try it. Like, people limit themselves. Fear doesn't allow people to actually be what they can. You know, people are afraid, even in an actual conference room or in a board meeting, if you're there, if someone raises their hand and, and answers a question or provides information that you knew, that person deserves to be ahead of you in life. You know, you can't be afraid to be out there. It's, if, it's a lot of places where people are vulnerable, where they don't actually just say, you know what, this is what I think or how I feel about it. And I deal with that all the time, like, from a music business perspective, we'll go through a process where you create a project and then you sit in a staff meeting full of people that have been handpicked from the people that we feel like would be experts in the music business that have been around 30, maybe 35 years in the business. And really to watch them look at each other and not want to say what they actually feel because they're afraid of being wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, so... It kind of leaves me in a space where I, I use my own judgment, and that's where Eminem becomes valuable to me because I can cons accept constructive criticism from him because I'm sure that there's nothing, no ill will and nothing negative that he would want to see from me. You know, like sometimes you have friends that you see them and they don't look the same because every time you see them, their hand is out. They look a little different. Every time you see a person in the hand out, they ain't as cute as they used to look. <laughs> they look, you know, a lot different. But um, when you're successful and, and the person who gave you the opportunity is still very successful, it, it removes a lot of the things that would be there, that you, a lot of obstacles or things that you would think would be reasoning for them to say different things or do different things. Right. Yeah, and you need someone, you know, no one's right all the time. You need someone who you trust, who can, you get counsel from. And yeah, I mean, everyone needs that. It's just on different levels, you know. Some people can function without asking very many questions. I'll, I'll just go and play the music and watch his response. If he's like, oh, my God, this is crazy, then I'll keep it. If, the, if he's not really responding to it, if he's, like, trying to figure out why I wrote it, and I go, okay, let me scrap that. Because we write music for a living, both of us. So if what I'm writing is too complex for him to get it, I'm sure the average listener ain't going to get it.